Hello everybody and welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. Uh, in this tutorial we'll be going through how to detail this sheath in ZBrush and how to basically UV unwrap it very quickly and how to add some, you know, as I said, add some details, decimate the mesh and so on. Uh, it's all, this, this entire tutorial was meant to be quite a basic sort of thing, how to make a basic knife sheath and, you know, some stitches and, so, and some detailing on it. Uh, in my next tutorial, I'm going to paint it, uh, but for now, we're only talking about, uh, as I said, sculpting the mesh uh, a little bit, not 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 uh, not a lot. Uh, I hope you guys learned something new in this video. Uh, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you do. And uh, yeah, with no further ado, let's begin. Right, so we've got our model over here in ZBrush. We've got the sheath, we've got the uh, belt, we've got the two caps. And basically what we want to do is we want to start editing this um, sheath and add some of the details from our reference image. Uh, some of this intricate design over here and some of the stitches as you can see in uh, over here. So in the subtool palette we've got the sheet selected uh, and we do want to increase our uh, number of active points. So we'll go into geometry and then we'll go to Dynamesh and it's like this basically basically this is the simplest way to increase our um, a polygon count and have a very even spread of geometry. So with a resolution of 1700 set up there, I'm just going to click Dynamesh and we'll let ZBrush do its magic and we should be getting a decent result. So we're now at 1.9 million of these uh, uh, points, which is, you know, a very good resolution to actually work with right now. Right, so the next thing we want to do, let's press this button over here, which is activating, activating the solo mode, so we can only see this mesh in our viewport. And uh, let's deactivate Dynamesh. We'll, we won't divide the mesh any further unless we need to, uh, because if we click divide over here, we're going to get like 7.7 7 million polygons, which is not exactly a lot necessarily, but it is you know, too much for what we're working with uh, over here. So I'm just going to undo that. And now what we want to do, we want to create some polygroups. So we'll go down here into the polygroups option and we've got this group by normals. So I'm going to take that down to 10 and then we'll just press group by normals and let's have a look what, uh, you know, what sort of result we get. Let's just wait a little bit for ZBrush to calculate the um, you know, make its calculations. So this is basically what ZBrush has come up with. Um, so it's created a, a polygroup for the outside and a polygroup for the inside, which is exactly what we needed. Right, and now with the polygroups created, I'm just going to control shift and click on this. And now it will basically show me going to the layer of the mesh. Um, now what we want to do is we want to go over to our brushes and find the one called Stitch Basic. So we're going to select that one. And now if you drag on the mesh, um, if you drag on the mesh, you're going to get this effect, <laughs> which is definitely not what we were looking for. Let's just go into up here in brush and uh, we should have an option in here to say reset brushes. I'm sure it was up here. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, oh right, sorry, it's in the brush palette. So we're just going to press reset all brushes and then we're going to go into stitch and that has now fixed it as you can see, right? So that, that's what the effect I was getting with a mouse. This is what I'm going to get with a um, pen. So I'm just going to decrease that intensity a little bit. Uh, I want to only get like the clearly, you know, get the stitches rather than get anything else. So that should help. Uh, I'm going to increase our draw size a little bit, make these stitches a bit um, bigger, something like that. And now, what we also want to do is we want to activate symmetry. So we're going to go up in here and transform, activate symmetry on the x-axis. So whatever we do on this side will also happen on the other side, which is exactly what we want. Right. So now looking at the reference, we can start basically over here at the tip and you know, come down here and go like that and maybe finish somewhere around here. Yeah, something like that. Um, what we also want to do is maybe add some more stitches this way. Uh, 
do some stitches that way. You know, we were just trying to create a little bit of um, a little bit of shape as to why there would be a um, you know some stitches over here, right? Uh, I'm also going to add. Well, actually, I don't think I'm going to add stitches on the outside. What I'm going to do is I'm going to Control Shift click. No, sorry, Control Shift. Let me just undo that. Control Shift and drag, and that will invert our selection. And now we can have a look inside the mesh basically. And I want us to start the same thing over here on the inside. It's gonna be a bit tricky to get the positioning right. Right, let me just, yeah, something like that. Don't be afraid to let go and then reposition yourself from a different angle. Oh, sorry, I just deleted everything and undid everything. So I'm just gonna go that way. But we do have a problem. Because our mesh is not equal, as you can clearly see over here, we've basically created, so we because we use symmetry, this is what happens. So I'm just gonna deactivate symmetry and I'm going to start it again because we don't have an equal mesh um, so it's not very, it's not symmetrical necessarily. Okay, like that. What else I'm gonna do? Actually, let me just invert the selection. Um, now it's fine. It's just the inside. I'm going to increase the intensity a little bit so we can see that that stitch a bit more because it is going to be on the inside. So I think it's really up to you in terms of your preference of how much intensity you want to apply there. Uh, I'm just going to keep on going over here like that. And now I'm going to go on this side, you know, just going to add a few stitches. It doesn't need to be perfect, or it actually can be as perfect as you want it to be. So I'm just going to drag and drag and also if you hold shift, for example, at this stage, you could make the lines very, very uh, straight. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a little, in just, a, just a bit. So yeah, something like that. Now we control shift out. So for example, if you're dragging a stitch over here and you press shift, now you can see this, this green uh, line. So whatever you stop, that's where the stitch is gonna go towards in a straight line, basically. So we've got that done there, you know, in terms of stitches, very basic stitch. I've not done anything intricate like a new design or anything like that of a stitch. I, I just used what ZBrush was coming, uh, you know, what ZBrush had. Uh, so the things that we could do, you know, we could add some stitches on this side as well for um, an increased effect. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to have a stitch over here since we already have that on the inside. So you could potentially come over here and do one like that but obviously press X on the keyboard uh, this time around for symmetry as uh, both of the sides of the, of the sheath are gonna be equal over here, as you can see, right? Well, almost equal. Um, <laughs> right, okay, so actually I'm just gonna have to do it manually on both sides just so they can actually look okay. Something like that. And then I'm just gonna go on this side um, sorry about that. I'm normally used to to using my my Surface Pro tablet in order to do these this kind of modeling because it's straight on the screen where I can use ZBrush. Uh, but when I'm recording, I use a computer and a and a tablet on the on the desk, which is a bit uh, it's not very comfortable for me to be honest. Right. Okay. So we've got our stitches in place. Now we want to add some of this design that you see over here. Um, again, we've got our symmetry active, so whatever we do on this side will happen on that side as well. So we're just gonna go into brushes, um, going to DS for damn standard, and I just want to do a few tests with it. So we're obviously gonna have to do a bit of a smaller incision than what's what, yeah something like that that looks about that looks quite nice let's also change our t material to uh, matte cap gray uh, if only i could find it something yeah something like that so that's gonna look a bit better right so we can see in the design over here 
in pure ref. Um, sort of, it's got these sort of like branchy looking um, looking things. Uh, so I'm gonna try and actually do something like that. As you can see, they, they start fairly um, equal. I'm just gonna make it a bit thicker, maybe a bit more. Yeah, something like that. So we can do some, you know, we, we can start a few of these details over here, push a bit lighter, and then do, you know, do something like that but again it's all about the motion really over here so you know uh, you've done that you can do oh one thing that I, we, we don't need to we must not forget and sorry about that before we start doing any of this carving into the mesh let's just go to morph target and press um, store morph target and for some reason it's not allowing me I don't quite oh sorry it's because I need to basically see the whole mesh and now I can press store morph target. Um, and the reason why I did that was because now when we do these designs, they will overlap a lot better than before when uh, the overlap would have been quite bad in terms of the, the insets that we're doing. So I'm just gonna draw these lines a little bit here, uh, you know, just a bit of um, play around. And then I'm just gonna drag this. I just wanna do a, something like a, um, you know, very nice sort of shape. In order to get these shapes properly done, you would need to do to do it quite loosely. Um, you could even do that with a mouse. I'm just gonna I'm gonna show you in just a little bit how you could use the mouse to do some um, quite some nice shapes as well. Um, you know, something like that. Or you know, just have some of these more more of these lines. Right, let's just try with a mouse and I'll show you what I mean. So basically we click and we drag and now we press shift and now we've got a line going on, yeah? So can basically, it is a bit tricky to pull off. See, that makes it in a straight line. So it's, it's generally if you want to do it with a, with a mouse, what I, would, what I would recommend is go to the chisel up here in brushes First chisel should be fine to use, uh, make it a bit smaller. As you can see, it's quite a lot less softer than what we use so far. So we could potentially just uh, decrease, not sorry, not the intensity, but the focal shift. Uh, you're gonna have to toy with this a little bit in order to get the result that you want. Again, intensity needs to be at the maximum, I believe. Uh, maybe it's too much, something around there still not matching specifically let me just try with focal with a higher focal shift and a smaller size yeah something like that so you see the chisel helps you with the mouse as well because it's not immediately starting to grow it's like adding a sort of a lazy effect to the mouse uh, you can even use a pen to achieve some of these it's getting difficult when you want to pull into tighter places um, so I'm just going to go back to into damn standard. Um, so again, just adding some more of these details. Sorry, that wasn't too nice. Okay. Um, I'm not giving it. I'm not giving it too much thought on the detail. Um, I'm just trying to get something over here. You know, something on on the mesh so you can see can definitely work on some uh, more of these designs um, any way you want. You know, make them make them look a lot more intricate. Um, I mean, some of the, some other things that you could do is, for example, you can press Control to mark pen to mask to, to, to use the mask pen. And for example, let's just oh sorry, let's just do a um, you know we'll do a shape. We'll do another shape over here. We'll do another shape. I don't know, something like that. Pull this in. You know, just multiple shapes of whatever. And now, control click to invert the mask. And then we can go into deformation. And then we can use inflate by, let's say, uh, let's try one just, for, uh, just to see. 
So we've inflated the mesh by one. It's not necessarily, it's not really working for us. So I'm just going to inflate it by two, something like that. And then an inflate balloon by one. This is gonna take a bit of time to for it to process. But basically, you know, that's a different kind of design that we got there. So the power of this is actually lies in the mask because for example, you know, I've added this mask over here. What I could do is control alt and start removing some of it. So create uh, sharper edges. Um, if you know what I mean? So for example, we do that and then we, we do a bit of a, you know, we, you can do all sorts of, all sorts of designs in here. Um, believe I still have a shape in there so I'm just gonna undo yeah so you know you can do so for example let me just um, in increase the intensity of the mask sorry intensity of the mask so now it's a lot more focused uh, we could do something like this for example and then we could come in here and really play with some of these and then invert sorry then invert the mask, and this is a sort of effect you get. You know, you get this shape out, so you can then inflate that basically if you want to. But again, these are just things that you can um, you can play with. Um, you know, I'm just gonna try and um, you know do some more of these um, designs over here. So I don't know. Let's just draw. Oh God, honestly, not being able to do it on a screen is so difficult for me. I'm so used to it now. I would definitely recommend everybody that wants to do ZBrush to have a tablet that they can draw straight on the screen. I mean, the difference is phenomenal. Uh, I can never get used to a um, to one of these normal normal tablets. Could never do it uh, because it's all about the flow. So if you want to make some good lines, you want to have a good flow on the actual lines. So yeah, it's just. So we're not gonna add some more details. Add some more of these shapes around here. We could potentially go and and you know you can even <laughs> do something like that if you want, but I know it's burned basically in the leather over there on the on the actual reference. So I may not want to do that. Other than that, I think design-wise, this is what we're going to remain with. But you already see how this has transformed the mesh, basically, just by doing some very shoddy um, sort of design over here at the front. Now, one thing that I've noticed is I've not activated symmetry, which is amazing. Uh, thank you for that. What we could do is we could replicate what's on this side to the other side, um, or we could just redo the design. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remake the design to something a bit nicer, and I'm just going to skip to that and basically have symmetry active as well. But you get the idea of how you can play with this and, and just get some really, really nice uh, textures on it. Right, so this is basically um, the sort of result that I've got. Um, I have basically done some of the design over here, like found in the uh, in the reference image. Uh, I'm actually happy with it the way it is right now. So I think this will definitely work for our intended purposes. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure we export this. I don't need to export the other parts. So I'm not really going to do anything to them in here. I'm going to uh, basically give them more detail into uh, Substance Painter rather than do them any sort of detailing over here. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go up here in Z plugin and then export with selected active. And then basically I'm just going to go to the folder where I've got the, um, where I've got my sheath i'm just going to use sheath zbrush version so i basically know what to import out of um out of zbrush now one thing that i've already done wrong is i haven't specifically um i haven't i haven't decimated the mesh so if i import this at 1.9 million points it's actually going to be quite slow um but you know decimating this should be quite straightforward uh we'll go up here in z plugin press the uh, pre-process current so z plugin 
uh, decimation master pre-process current once you press this button your computer will go on um, you know will zbrush will freeze for a few or a few seconds or depending on how fast your computer is and once the pre-process is finished you can then click the decimation uh, decimate current button based on what target uh, percentage you want so for this mesh in particular i'll go for something like 15 percent and that should be okay so i'm going to press uh, the pre-process current button and i'll see you after that's done so now when I press the, go into Z plugin and press the decimation, as I said, to 15%. So let's do a decimate current and have a look. Uh, after decimating, we're now at 289,000 points. Let's just do a control Z to check the quality. And I think it's, it's out pretty well. Yeah, so now we'll go into Z plugin and basically do the export of the mesh. And then I'll see you guys in... Um, 3ds max very quickly so we can unwrap the model and then make it substance painter ready basically so now we're back in 3ds max and we've got our um, straps and sheath and you know the caps that we're going to take off we've got the knife over here but we do want to import our new model so i'm just going to go to import go to where i saved the uh, file and basically import it from uh, zbrush um, so the sheath should import basically where we've got the knife and the, yeah, that's looking okay. So you can see our model basically over there on top of the, the, the knife. It's all looking okay. Actually, it's coming a bit more together. Uh, now, some of the things that we want to do, uh, we've got the caps already in place and we've got the strap in place as well. So that should be, that should be just fine. Now we need to create the variants of all of these as uh, the low poly. So for example, you know, you've got cap number one, cap number two. So I'm just going to rename that to cap one. Oh, sorry. I'm just going to do a rename cap one uh, high and then a rename. Actually, in this case, we don't need to do that. What we need to do is we get the sheath selected. Let's just go up here to default shed shading, go to display selected and, and disable this option so we no longer see the wireframe. What I'm actually going to do is I'm basically going to um, go into, well basically I want to attach this is what I'm saying. Now we do have a sheath over here that's our original version. Uh, I want to take the open subdiv to 1 basically. And if we press F4, this is how many polygons we have on the mesh. Uh, let's just add another poly on top. Let's go to polygon mode. And basically what I want to do is I want to go into um, uh, by angle. And I want to lower the angle maybe to something like 20. Yeah, that's going to do just nicely. And I want to basically auto smooth that and then go on the top over here. Oh, sorry. Um, deactivate by angle and just select these polygons like that and then auto smooth that as well. Okay, now activate by angle again and go on the other side of the mesh and we want to do an auto smooth there as well. And then underneath, well actually we don't need to do anything underneath, let's just alt Q so to basically um, uh, isolate this mesh and I'm just doing an auto smooth on the inside as well. Um, auto smooth, yeah that should be fine. So let's just have a look. Now I don't really like what's going on over here, so I'm just gonna try and auto smooth again. Uh, so these poly polygons have become quite a bit corrupted. Um, let's just go into, you know, deactivate by angle. Let's have a look why this is actually happening. So it's probably gonna have to do some, it's gonna be something to do with these, um, you see, it's over here basically. It's how the um, mesh is how the normal map is reading this information so i've just pulled it up uh basically fix that issue over there i'm just going to fix it on this side as well i'm sure we can have it over here as well yeah okay so that looks 
rather smooth. You know, there's still some areas that probably have a bit of problem. Um, you know, like this one, for example. So again, just need to work out why. Um, generally, it's because of the way it's sitting, the way the mesh is sitting. So just gotta sort of play with it a little bit, but overall it should be fine. Right, so this is our low poly version of the of the mesh. Uh, let's just activate the high poly. Uh, let's have a look. The low poly is a bit bigger than the high poly, but uh, you know we, what we can do. We can go and open subdiv over here, and we can actually increase some of the iterations, which will then make the shape hold out a bit better. We'll go back to our poly, and basically we can see the result. Old Q again. Unfortunately, we did lose some of our uh, smoothing groups by doing that. So I'm just gonna have to auto smooth some of these again. Yeah, and then I've got this side here, which basically belongs to no one, which is what's causing that issue. Um, just gonna make sure it's actually combining properly. Yeah, that's auto smoothed. And we still have this problem over here. I believe would pretty much have the same fix yeah pretty much yeah so this is basically what we've got and if we see over here it actually matches quite uh, okay with the high poly right we're just going to rename this to uh, sheath uh, low and we're also going to rename the our high poly as sheath high. We've got a strap, basically, um, that we want to rename to strap um, high, but it actually won't really matter because we're going to, um, we are going to, uh, you know, attach some of these together. So strap high, sheath high, sheath low, knife low, we're not worried about the knife. Uh, caps high and caps, you know, two um, high. Let's just leave them like that for now. Um, we can basically rename the. We, we can we can duplicate these. So if we select everything, so we've got the strap, the sheet, the caps, and everything, and we just go in here and say clone as a copy, not an instance. And these are our copies, basically. And I believe if we click rename, we can do that, for example, but I, I think it's gonna cause a bit of a mess. Uh, I'm just gonna go from the top and basically make a low variant of these. Um, so that's gonna be low. It's very important for Substance Painter that you basically rename these um, the way that it should be. So again, low, and then this one, same thing, we'll do low. Uh, now we want to uh, go into, um, we want to basically um, create the UV maps for the mesh. So we've got our sheath low selected. I'm just going to Alt Q on the keyboard to see it. And then we're going to go up here and activate text tools. And then we're going to press this cube. Oh, sorry, not the other UV. We're just going to press the this cube over here twice. And this is how our UV is laid out. I'm then going to press the open UV editor over here. And that will bring up the editor. So we've got polygon mode active. We can select everything. Or what we could do is we can go by angle, which is already selected. And uh, we can pretty much do the same angle like we did when we decide, when we uh, smooth you know use smoothing groups for this. So yeah, something like that. And then we can press this button over here, which will then you know take this part out. And then we can do the same thing on this side. Uh, we'll want to select all of these as well. It's very important that they go into a sort of a mirror kind of effect. Um, yeah, that's un unimportant. Okay, so I've got that side as well, which for some reason doesn't look so great. So I'm just gonna quick peel it. So now it does. Okay. Um, 
it is stretching a little bit over here but it is underneath nothing that can be seen basically so it shouldn't be a problem we do have a seam over here on the top which depending on how you want this to show you, you may want to get rid of it um, but I'm thinking you know let me just pull it out I just want to I want to get my shapes out a little bit just to, just to see what I'm dealing with um, so this is not coming out quite as expected um, and I'll tell you why because the best thing to have done here would have been to combine that with the other pieces so for example having a um, having a line right through here you know running across and I can right click that and say uh, break well actually you know what We'll go into polygon mode, select everything, press this button over here to get the mesh like that. Go into edge mode and double click this edge and then right click and break, right? So now I select this and I press quick peel and I've already got two of the meshes out. One of them being this one. Uh, which is the inside and the other one being this one which is oh, so honestly this didn't come out quite as expected I must say right okay let's just do that again so we've got this edge over here we're just going to right click and break we're now back into polygon mode and we're going to select this face and I want us to basically select this whole thing across here right so we're just gonna go in top view uh, which is yeah top view should be fine uh, make sure you deactivate you well you got the ignore back facing active anyway so that's gonna be quite okay make sure you deactivate uh, select by angle so by holding control and dragging we're going to select these um, polygons Okay, I'm just going to back, go back in perspective mode. I need to select these as well. Uh, for some reason, we still had this. So by going into, um, you know, going into uh, select by angle, I could deselect all of those by holding Alt and clicking on them. So I'm just going to take all of this as well. Probably from this side. Yeah, something like that. And then I'm going to break it and quick peel it. And this is a far superior mesh. Oh, look at that. So I'm just gonna have to select all of these, press this button over here, break them all together, and now quick peel again so we get that part out as well. Now, one other thing that we can do is Control I for an invert selection. It selects everything else that we haven't selected go into uh, angle mode and basically if on the inside let's start deselecting all of these um, polygons that we don't want to have selected right and that just leaves us with a nice clean sort of side uh, okay so now I'm going to um, as you can see right here so go on the inside a little bit so now we can press uh, break and then quick peel and we get that part out as well right the only thing I'm, I'm worried about is the top which still doesn't look uh, neat so and we still got all these um, sort of elements that have been selected as well so in, in order to quickly fix these just uh, break them so take them off these are our rogue selections basically so break them off um, okay see this one here as well this is the inside as you can see so it's not exactly something that we needed anyway but these are parts of the of the mesh I know it, it, it may seem like it's sloppy to do this but trust me no professional would ever worry about parts that are not even going to be seen by anything okay 
Um, you may think you need to get rid of all of those problems, but in reality, they're not as big as you may think they are. Right, so that's pretty much the inside in there that I want to now unwrap. So same thing, you know what, actually I'm going to select it and then go to mapping and just flatten it and press OK. And the reason why I did that is because it's a lot simpler to get the result that I want a lot quicker. It will, it will just automatically sort of UV the entirety of inside and make sure that my uh, texture is spread uh, correctly. So now I've got these two, which are not particularly uh, coming OK in the shape over here, as you can see. So what we could do is we could do the same thing. We can select and do a flattened mapping. And then we can have a look at the results, uh, which again, not really happy with it. It's really problematic, this side over here. For some reason, it just keeps on stretching. I'm not quite sure why. Let me just sort of double click that edge and just break it. And now I just want to select it and, and really see what's going on with it. So just quick peeled it, dragged it out. It's still not looking okay. God, this is a very, this is a very stubborn edge, isn't it? So yeah, quick peeling doesn't work. Peel like that doesn't work either. Flatten mapping doesn't work. Very interesting case, this one. I mean, everything else is okay apart from here. So what I'm thinking is I might add some more geometry to it. You know, just add the, the sides basically. So deactivate by angle, let's just select a few more polygons in there. And this one here, and that one. Yeah, I'm just not fussed about what's going on over here. So I'm just going to take these, select these. So yeah, we're already a bit more into our mesh. UV unwrapping is always a pain, you know. It's never there's never a, a complete and and good way of doing it. it. It just you need to experiment based on the mesh that you're making. It's going to be different probably every time you do it. Um, in terms of um, you know if you're doing another mesh, another sort of subject, um, hard surface unwrapping is generally easier than um, than organic stuff. Right. So I've got that as a mesh. I'm just gonna basically got it down here and it's still not coming out okay so some of the things that I might do is I might basically drag it all out close the UV mapper go over here and reset my X form and see if that helps let's make sure we get out of that mode okay and now we'll do a unwrap UV map uh, open UV editor again and then let's just have a look yeah okay now it's fixed you see I should have just done that from the get-go really we see you've got a few elements over here again not really fussed about that it's gonna be underneath but if you really want to add those into your uh, into your mesh it's not really a problem. All you need to do is go over here and select the side. So whatever side that is, which is this one. And then we just can add these elements in. And you know, even the exterior elements as well, like that. Um, and now all you need to do is just quick peel that. And it will, oh sorry, not quick peel, press this button over here, which is called the flattened by material ID. And then you have there you have it and then on the other side we've got the same thing um, we just need to select these as well flatten by material ID a quick peel and that's done the inside the mesh is causing quite a bit of distortions in it um, you can't really tell right now but it is distorting it a bit so now our mesh is okay just always remember to reset that uh, you know re reset 
uh, reset it basically to get a better result. Now mm. I'm just going to go for the automated version of this and just just press the button to put it to rearrange them, uh, depending on what elements you want to uh, give them more resolution to. So for example, this one and sorry and this one, I wouldn't worry about the resolution too much. I would basically get these a bit smaller and then I would make sure these parts on the other hand apart from that one obviously on the inside uh, get the most resolution uh, so you know all of these would go over here I'm just gonna make that bigger so you can see all of these we will be uh, putting in here to them to the maximum resolution that they can be at and then all of these will put them inside as well they're gonna obviously become incredible uh, you know they're, they're gonna go at the highest resolution as possible but then we'll just drag them in just like so and we'll rotate them and then just make them smaller to fit in here basically like so and now that's our our mesh uv unwrapped basically and then we just go in here and and, uh, and do the same thing for the strap low and the caps um I mean, apart from the apart from the uh, strap low, the caps don't really need any much work. You just do an automatic an automatic UV unwrap. But um, you know, all of these here are elements that have an open subdiv, so you may want to tone that down to probably one iteration, um, something like that. Yeah, shouldn't be too many edges. So I've got all of it selected, and you can press over here to see the checkerboard on you know it's the same thing so you can you can apply this on multiple objects and i'm going to click on the unwrap uv map um, which then adds the modifier open uv editor and basically this is what we're seeing uh, i'm just going to go to mapping and just flatten this and uh, basically we'll get a very good result out of it i'm just going to drag them all out okay i'm going to close that and now I'm going to go into my sheath low, bring it all up, select all of them, select all these elements, do a UV unwrap on top of all of them, open UV editor, and now we can basically see the ed we can see the UV of everything. Um, these elements, these caps and everything else are quite small, so I don't really need them to be, you know, this big. But I do need my strap to be to be quite uh, high quality. So I'm just going to select all the elements from the strap. Well, actually, I'm just going to select by element, really. So now I've selected everything from the strap. Uh, we can move them out. Just like that. Uh, the, is this the cap? All oh, right, it's the inside of the cap. Yeah, definitely not a problem. Okay, so I've got my I've got my strap out, which is what I wanted, and I'm going to press the quick peel to make it as big as possible. Um, so these are the elements from the strap. Again, the strap is so small it won't really matter um, if you if you go if you if your scenes are correctly done or not, unless you really want to go into the most nitty de uh, knitting gritty details. These we can make quite small and fit them in here. Um, but then the strap, you know, you want the faces of the strap. So whatever's oriented from, um, on the inside and outside, you'll want those at the highest quality. So that's these elements, basically. Um, let's just put them in there. You know, this is what we've got. Now, some of the things that we want to do is, um, you know, you may want to rotate, put them all together like that. So the idea here is how do we fit these inside here and still maintain the proper, you know, a decent resolution. So we could do something like that. It's all about where you want to apply the detail. So be very mindful about where is your detail going to show. Yeah, it's very important that you get this correctly done. Um, you know, we could get these elements that are basically inside the mesh, we could get them even smaller and then we can fit our stuff over here. You see, just like that. But there's just one 
small detail. So we've got these elements now, which are so small, I'm not really too fussed about them. I just want to sort of like use the um, use the mesh, sorry, the automatic system to just get them in there, uh, put them in. I don't want to, I don't want to complicate this more than I should. So that's basically what we're getting. We can now get these caps a bit higher in terms of resolution. So I can drag these out, reposition, drag them out, something like that. So this is the resolution that we have for so the straps and the caps are going to have quite a high resolution compared to the rest of the mesh, actually. Uh, but yeah, it's going to look okay. So that's basically the model done. The low poly is now done for the strap, uh, for the sheath and the low poly for the knife we already have. Um, one thing that's left to do now is go into the material editor over here. Uh, have one material, let's call it sheath, and assign to, to, the, to, to these uh, parts, like so. And then select your knife low and go to this material. You know, I've got already one created, but you can just make one, call it knife, and uh, add the material. And when, when you export and import this into Substance Painter, Substance will read the sheath, the strap, and the caps as its own texture set, so you can paint that, and then it will read a knife and the handle as a different texture set. If you want, you can separate the knife and the handle into two different texture sets. All you need to do is just uh, go in the material in here and basically um, do that. Uh, so you take the, you, you, you uh, rename another material and add it to the handle and one to the knife, to the knife blade. Uh, but the more texture sets you've got, the more callouts you're going to have in the memory. So people generally, when they get some incredibly highly detailed models, they have a lot of texture sets on one model because they want to show as much detail text resolution on every part of it. So it's really up to you as to how much detail you want to go, but at some point it will kill your machine. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you actually learned something today. Uh, I have I tried to keep it as basic as possible. I didn't want to complicate things. You can you can do so much more with these tools that I've shown you today in ZBrush and 3ds Max and the UV unwrapping is always an enigma and something that I hope in the future some sort of AI artificial intelligence sort of approach can be done to it. Substance Paint that is trying you know algorithm it is actually trying that now. At the minute they've got a feature in Substance Painter where you bring a, a un UV mapped. A low poly model and the program will automatically UV map it for you in the best way possible. It's just not perfect and it doesn't add the detail where you want it and it basically doesn't know that there are some areas that are hidden and you maybe do not really want to have any sort of UV mapping done correctly in that area because nobody will ever see it. So it's it's uh, it's there's some drawbacks definitely but something definitely worth uh, look uh, you know worth looking into so if you enjoyed the video please subscribe please like it please leave a comment in the comment you know, in the comment section below and let me know what sort of videos you want to see me doing in the future and uh, you know thank you for watching and have a good one